Hi, I'm Dante Greco with Bionic Buzz here at the Education Through Music Los Angeles 18th Annual Gala at the Skirball Center. We have so many great interviews, so much fun here on the carpet. Stay tuned. Make sure you like and subscribe to Bionic Buzz on every possible platform, and we'll see you on the carpet. Hi, I'm Dante with Bionic Buzz, and I'm speaking with Austin Wintry. Austin Wintry, what brings you here tonight? Uh, well, I'm on the board for the organization, so I come every year. <laughs> don't have a choice. I love it, though, because you know you're enthusiastic still to this day. How long have you been involved with the organization? Uh, since it was started, about 15 or more years ago. I mean, since it was basically a tiny little, I don't want to say nothing or of an organization because we split off from the, from the original in New York City, but it was a very small, very humble little group of passionate people, mostly professional musicians, excited to bring music to young kids and and it's grown into a multi-million dollar organization that has you know, big staff and services something like almost 20,000 students. So from nothing to a lot. Absolutely. Why is music so impactful? Why can it make such a change in the lives of young people? Uh, well, there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, a big one is social. Music is a very communal thing, both in the sense of making music with people and learning to listen to each other and that sort of thing. Um, but also, obviously, in performing for an audience, and our kids all have to do that. They all they, they give concerts for the school, their classmates, the parents, that sort of thing. So there's a huge amount of research showing the massive social benefits and just your ability to relate to other people as you grow up. Uh, but even more foundationally, there's n like neuroscience kind of research about uh, the the plasticity of the brain and the pathways that we're forming when we're young, when our brain is still very raw and we don't have all of our kind of uh, S sort of uh, potential set and the, the brain this is why young kids can learn languages a lot faster than adults for example because the brain is very flexible very plastic and uh, music is one of the things that stimulates the development of new pathways more than just about any activity so when you're K through 5 and you have music classes even if you give up music say in high school your propensity to learn new things to pick up new skills all that sort of thing for the rest of your life is massively improved this is one of those things neuroscientists have been screaming at us for decades, it's a great book by, um, uh, I'm, I'm suddenly blanking on his name, but it's called Musicophilia, um, and it goes into this, and it, to me it was life-changing. It was one of those, this should be a fundamental right of childhood, that kids get this kind of exposure, because they don't have to then continue with music. Whatever they do for the rest of their life is going gonna, is gonna to be benefited. I love that. I'm pumped up right now about music. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I just ask you, how did you all select this year's honorees? Oh, well, we always have a process of, of a big network of school teachers that we choose from, and, and that's one of those where there's a whole kind of committee that goes through candidate educators in our community and, and picks one, and then as a board, we look at them, and they're always rock stars. We are always a bit spoiled for amazing teachers, and there's always a bunch to choose from. And then in terms of our, our uh, shining star, Christoph Beck, He's been someone who's been very supportive of the organization. He also has a lot of other kind of advocacy that he does separate from ours. And so uh, it was just one of those that when his name came up, everybody said, oh, that, that sounds great. Let's make it happen. Let's hope he's available. And he says yes. I love it. I love it. Well, if people want to get more involved, where should they go? Uh, ETMLA.org. We're always looking for folks who want to contribute, both time, you know, ideas, finances, all that kind of stuff. I personally, I'm a musician and I'm a composer. I love putting on concerts and events and and sort of convincing my friends to do crazy shenanigans so that we can chalk it up to being a fundraiser to this. And meantime, we get to go, you know, throw a party and make crazy music. Awesome. Have a great time tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well, I'm really here to support. I mean, this is a, a, a wonderful initiative that's been started, and now I believe it's in its 18th year of this, this event. And so I'm here to show my support and, and to, you know, be surrounded by so many wonderful people. And so I'm just excited to be here. How does this organization touch your life, and how is it important to bring music to children? Well, I mean, I was once a kid who, you know, wanted to, to be a musician and, and ultimately found my way, but I think a program like ETMLA provides a lot of access that maybe, you know, kids wouldn't have had 10 or 15 years ago. And so it's important because it, you know, it provides a platform for people to, to be able to recognize this avenue and, and, you know, ideally, if it's something that they're interested in, have the resources to be able to pursue that. Wonderful. What's your what's your instrument, and who's your biggest musical influence? My primary instrument now is the piano. It used to be the trumpet, but I haven't played in in a while. Um, I would say that my biggest musical inspiration is probably John Williams. I mean, he uh, like so many other kids inspired me to want to pursue film music and and 
I've had the good fortune to see him in concert a number of times, and every time I leave, I just am filled with such a, a joy and an inspiration to be able to walk the earth as a, you know, a giant like him. So I would say that he's a, a, a muse of sorts, if, if that can be, you know, uh, the title I would give him, but definitely one of my biggest inspirations. I love him too. Uh, I was listening to Home Alone, and, and I was just like, oh my God, it's Sean Williams at its best. I love it. I love all his soundtracks. Well, that's such a cool thing. So do you have any messages for people how to they can ca keep supporting this organization? And what is what, what we need to do to support this organization? What would the viewers could do to support? Well, I would say word of mouth is, is a, a, a very valuable resource. Just getting the, the word out about the organization and having people lend their support, whether it be monetary or otherwise. I think that's a, a wonderful way to continue to grow and, and make sure that all of the kids who are beneficiaries of this organization have what they need. Thank you so much for this interview. Have uh, have fun this evening. And uh, well, check Bionic Bus for the interview. I will. Thank you very much. Chris, uh, I'm so I'm so happy to be talking to you about like you're my favorite director. Thank I you so much. I have, I've been listening to the uh, Home Alone soundtrack now that's Christmas time. It's perfect. That's great. Well, it is a beautiful soundtrack. I, I you know, I had the opportunity to work with John Williams and it's such such an honor to work with one of the greatest composers of all time and John did Home Alone for us. He did Harry Potter for us, and uh, it's just it was it's been a wonderful experience working with him. Oh, that's so wonderful. So, how are you involved with this organization, and what it means to you to be here tonight? Well, I'm here to present an award to uh, a composer I've worked with four times, a guy named Christoph Beck, who's one of the great composers working today, and I'm giving him an award later in the evening. So, very happy about that. What do you think about people that listen to soundtracks instead of regular music? Because I'm one of those weirdos. I love like the Star Wars soundtrack. I love the, you know, uh, Home Alone and, and I don't know, 300. And what do you think of like, what is going on with this kind of people? Well, the funny thing is when I write, I'm a big rock and roll fan and a big music fan. But when I write, I listen to soundtracks and it inspires me. So I'll put on the Braveheart soundtrack, the Gladiator, uh, the Godfather. Just it inspires me as I'm writing. Um, and so I don't think it's weird at all. I think it's some of the best music. I mean, it's, it's our only classical, original classical. Well, there's original classical music being made today, but I think this is some of the best. Film scores are some of the best classical music being written today. What's your favorite score of all time? Is there anything like it's a particular or go-to? Like, have you seen like the Spotify uh, top like music that you've been listening in a year? Like, is any, for example, like in my Spotify says you've been listening to the 300 soundtrack way too much. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, uh, I think the great, my favorite film score ever. Ri well, I'm an Ennio Morricone fan, so all of the spaghetti westerns and all of the beautiful Italian music he made for those Italian films. If you go to the Spotify, sound, you know, playlist and you type in Ennio Morricone, you'll hear some of the most beautiful music you've ever heard. Also, I think uh, Maurice Jarre's um, score for Lawrence of Arabia may be my favorite score of all time great thing and do you have any messages for people like trying to like help children be, be back in music how to get kids involved in music these days because I feel like people are so distracted with social media and they're not paying attention to the arts as they supposed to so any tips any cool things that you're doing in your home in your life well not for me I mean my, my children are older now so they're not I don't think they're gonna be taking up instruments at any point but I do believe put that phone away lock it away <laughs> You know, give it to your mother or your father, pick up a guitar, practice it for an hour a day. Once you get your 10,000 hours in, you could be Taylor Swift. So either pick up a guitar, play the piano, do something musical. Give yourself one hour a day. That's it. Even if it's a half hour, but there is something to be said for the 10,000 hour rule. Once you've hit that 10,000 hours, you're... you're do yeah, I think everybody who's successful has put 10,000 hours into it. Of that, I heard. I have to go write a book about it. But, anyways, well, thank you so much for the interview. I don't want to take too much of your time. Thank you so much, and thanks for listening to the Home Alone soundtrack. I love. I've been listening all nonstop. <laughs> Ta -da -da. <laughs> Congratulations in this wonderful award. How do you feel to be honored tonight? I'm in awe. Um, it's incredible to be here. Um, I feel like um, a sense of belonging and a sense of real accomplishment. Yeah. 
how do you how are you involved with this organization and uh, i'm a huge fan of frozen and i can't believe i'm here because my daughter is a huge fan <laughs> of frozen but how are you going uh, how are you involved with this organization and how can we bring music to children in current times well um my involvement with this organization goes back about 12 15 years um, I was introduced to it through some colleagues, um, and right away I saw something that uh, was exciting. Um, you know, decades ago, uh, the LA school board decided to completely eliminate early music education, um, and ETMLA steps in and uh, picks up where the LA school board left off and gives those kids a chance to express themselves, a chance to touch other people um, in a way that they wouldn't otherwise. You know, music can express uh, feelings and, uh, and tell stories that words cannot. Um, and for me personally, you know, music was a way uh, during a period of time, elementary school, middle school, and high school, that's, that's a tough time for a lot of us. And it was a way for me to feel powerful and, and feel like I could connect and and express myself with other human beings and and to connect with myself in a way that you know math science english really can't it's interesting because especially now after covid i think one of the things that's missing is connection of people and human beings and kind of having that bring brought back through this organization is so wonderful and uh, how can people support more th this organization and uh what, what would you tell for someone that's like trying to break through the music industry as a kid? Like, well, what would you tell like a, your younger self in a way? Well, I, I would definitely, um, a anyone who wants to support music education for kids, there's tons of great organizations out there. ETMLA is, is of course, my favorite. Um, there's also the Mr. Holland's Opus Foundation and, and many others, just a, a quick Google. Um, and I would also encourage parents to talk to their um, administrators at their schools and let them know that music education is important to them and, and see what happens. Um, and for, for any of these kids, one of, the, one of the things that I love about early music education is it exposes them to this way of expressing yourself and this way of connecting with other people um, and hopefully gives them uh, an opportunity to imagine um, a way that they could keep doing that like throughout their lives, whether it's for a living professionally or just as a way to, um, to express themselves artistically. Um, it's, it's such an important part of, of uh, being a whole person is to, is to have that creative outlet of expression. Wonderful. And tell me, just uh, out of curiosity for the Bionic Buzz viewers, who is your biggest musical influence and who is your favorite composer of all times? Okay. Um, I think the answer to that, both those questions, is the same person. I'm going to name Jerry Goldsmith. Jerry um, passed away a number of years ago. He's a legendary film composer, and he has uh, an incredible gift of not only melody, but also economy. He has a way of spinning out entire pieces of music based on very small ideas. He can take the smallest, simplest idea and just turn it into something monumental and complex. And it, because they're all based on the small idea, it gives them a real sense of cohesion, sort of like the, what Beethoven would do all the time. Uh, and yes, I did just compare Jerry Goldsmith to Beethoven because I really put them in the same category. And he personally, to me, uh, because he was my teacher, um, uh, was very important to me. That's such a beautiful uh, answer, and I think it's wonderful. Thank you so much for this interview. I hope you have fun tonight. Thank you so much for the interview. I sure will. Thank you. So what brings you tonight, Dan? Oh, music education. You know, making sure that 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 the kids get to learn uh, learn music and, and learn everything else through music. What do you think is the best way for kids to learn music? By ear, by sight. What do you think? I think the most important thing is to teach them to love music. I think that. If we don't have a love of music instilled in our heart, then the rest of it is kind of for no reason. Any instrument that you think is like the, m not easiest, but like the one that would be best to start on? I mean, for me, really guitar was the one that, that worked because I was able to just make 
chord shapes with my hand and kind of play and play songs, you know. But I think, you know, anything can be a great starting point. Piano can be a great starting point. Drums can be a great starting point. I mean, you know, it just depends if you love playing that instrument. What's the elevator pitch for people to want to get involved in education through Music LA? Music is such an ancient, beautiful part of our souls and of our brains. Uh, and there's just no way to be a part of the human universal experience without music. I love it. Couldn't have said it any better. If there's anything you got coming up or if you want people to follow you, where should they go? They can go to uh, uh, Instagram, at Dan Romer. I got some stuff coming. Yeah. Anything you want to talk about? Uh, we'll go to the Instagram. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dan. Thank you so much. And your eyeliner looks perfect. Your eyeliner look, looks great. Oh That's no... So much. I, this is, I woke up from a dead sleep and just came, I, um, I went to the bathroom right before doing this and made sure everything was just so. It looked perfect tonight. What brings you here tonight and tell me how you involved with this foundation? Okay, well, EMTLA is an organization close to my heart because we, the organization and myself, are super passionate about making sure that kids get music. Um, Kristen Bell and I uh, co-executive produce a show that I created called Do Ray and Me, which is on Amazon. And the sort of motto of the entire show was to get music into the hands of kids who can't have access, unfortunately don't have access to music, given the budget cuts. So I have a niece and two nephews, and my co-creator Mike has a bunch of nieces and nephews, and we realized they just weren't learning music like we did as kids. Wow. It's crazy. And so, and the reason Kristen is the way she is, she'll be the first to say, is because she had a music education. And the reason I am the way I am is because I had a music education. And that's why this organization is so incredible, because it's bringing music to everyone, to everyone who needs it. And that's literally everyone needs it. So, Like, what is your biggest musical influence? So like, if, like, uh, like, who's your favorite like composer? And who is like, the biggest musical influence in your life? My, oh God, there's so many, but I would say, oh, this gets me emotional. My biggest musical influence is my dad. Um, he is, uh, he was a teacher. He is around, but he doesn't work anymore. And he was a teacher his entire life, a phys ed teacher. But when he was in, in the 70s and 80s, he was in a bunch of bands, and he's an incredible singer-songwriter, taught me how to play guitar. He plays bass, he plays keys, he plays everything. So my entire childhood, everywhere we went, my dad sat at the piano and I sang. And I would say he's prob definitely my biggest musical influence. That's a beautiful answer. And uh, well, where can we find you? And uh, tell me a little bit more. How can people support uh, the children in music? Oh, okay. Well, there's uh, quite a few ways. But first of all, donate to this wonderful organization. But um, you can watch Do Ray and Me on Amazon. It's for the age ranges of two to five, but also kind of six. I have friends whose kids are six, and then <laughs> they love it. What can I say? But it really, every episode has an emotional lesson, a musical lesson, and a musical genre. So you're l so the kids don't even really know it's secret learning. So they don't have any idea they're learning. But at the end of it, they're like, "Why do I want to play a piano?" Sounds wonderful. I think it's a great tip. Well, thank you so much for your interview. I hope you have a wonderful time and fun tonight. Thank you, sweetie. Hey, I'm Dante with Bionic Buzz, and I'm here with Jean Bonton, composer for Transformers: Rise of the Beast, as well as board member for Real Change. Huge, huge, huge. What brings you here tonight? Well, I'm a board member of Real Change, an organization that Christoph Beck started with CSAC that really supports giving people their first opportunity to produce their major score uh, so that the world can see it and hopefully start their career. How can that change someone's life to give them this type of opportunity? Well, you know, here's the thing. When you get your first film, usually there's no money to actually produce the score. So with Real Change, what we do is we give you up to $25,000 to actually produce the music for your score so that when it hits film festivals, when it gets a distribution on streaming, you actually have a score that sounds great and that really supports the picture and hopefully gets you noticed. I love it. Where can people get involved and where can they follow you? Go to realchange.org. Okay, we'll be able to find us there. And my name is Jean Bonton. Again, I'm a composer for Transformers Rise of the Beast and other movies. And I can be found on Instagram, J-O-N-G-N-I-C. I'm Dante with Bionic Buzz and I'm speaking with I'm Katya Richardson. I'm a film composer. Fantastic. So how does it feel to be here tonight supporting ETM LA? LA? It feels really great. Yeah, this is my first time at this event, so I'm excited to 
uh, meet people and um, get to celebrate this amazing cause. I just worked on a project called The Last Repair Shop, which is about um, instrument repair in the LAUSD school district. And it's about music education and supporting music in our schools and continuing those programs. So I'm very passionate about that cause. That's so awesome. What instrument did you start on and how old? I started on a uh, piano when I was about eight years old, um, and it was really my gateway to composition. I started improvising and composing because of that instrument. It was really my way to tap into empathy and learning, learning deep emotion about myself and being able to be an em empathetic storyteller, which then led me to film scoring. But it all started at the piano for me, yeah. So you think every parent or just, you know, kids should be involved in music. It, it's a definitely a benefit to their lives. Oh, absolutely. Music is can teach us so many core things about life. It doesn't matter if you're seriously pursuing it to be a professional musician or it's just a hobby. I think it can offer so many beautiful things, teach us patience, how to connect with people, teach us how to all play our part. Like in an orchestra, um, we're so much stronger as a whole than uh, individually. So I think it just teaches us so many life lessons and it's so important for kids to be able to express themselves in that way. Love that. Well, if people want to find out more about you and what you're doing, where should they go? Yeah, um, you can find me at my website, katyarichardson.com, um, and please check out The Last Repair Shop. It's on YouTube. Uh, it's the latest uh, film that I scored, and yeah, it's about music, so please enjoy. Yeah. Thank you. Have a great night. Pam Polia. Pam, how are you involved with this organization, and what brings you here tonight? You look fabulous, by the way. Thank you so much. What brings me tonight is the joy of giving an award to the teacher who took over my job in Burbank teaching choir at a middle school, Lydia Lee. She's getting an award tonight, and I get to present it. That's wonderful. And how are you involved with this organization for so long, and you're presenting? What does it mean to you to be here helping uh, children in music? Well, it's been one of my main goals my entire teaching career that every child should have music education and so anybody that supports that any fundraisers anything that we could sing at to promote it was something that I've always believed in so I think this is a very special organization who's your favorite musical influence of all times my favorite influence of all time oh that's that's an interesting okay I'm gonna go back to my college days and say Karen Carpenter Wow, that's wonderful. I love her history that she was a drummer and didn't know she could sing, and then she had that special sound. Oh, my God, that's fantastic. Any composers? Um, I like a lot of composers. but Well, I'm a Swifty. I'm a Swifty, too. Say Taylor Swift. <laughs> that's a good, that's a good way to go. I yes, I, I say. We have a lot of people that are in our crowd. <laughs> that's wonderful. Well, thank you so much for the interview. And uh, any other message you would like to leave for the viewers and anything that people can do to continue supporting children in music, anything that parents should do to keep supporting children in music? I think that any parent that can support, any community that can support, and any Elks Club or Masonic Lodge or anybody like that that can support their little village, their little town, or their city's music program, they should make that a number one goal. That's a beautiful message. You look fabulous. You look like the award tonight. Thank you so much. I'm excited. <laughs> Have fun. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice meeting you. So what brings you here tonight? I'm a composer, and I've been uh, supporting this organization um, for, for several years, and it's a matter close to my heart. Talk to us about the importance of music and making an impact on the lives of young people, how it can change their lives for the better. I think both on a physiological and emotional level, music education has so much, uh, uh, so much to offer for, for, for children, and whether they end up being musicians or not, it doesn't even matter. And um, it's, uh, I, I think that's something that really needs to be emphasized and nurtured and uh, supported um, in children and in the school system. Do you have any memories of the first time you kind of became aware of music and started to enjoy it? Um, well, I started a conservatory, so speaking of music, music education, uh, when, uh, when I was five years old. And um, I grew up in a, in a different place, <laughs> uh, in, in Istanbul, and we were fortunate enough to have a, have a school system where I was able to actually get a free education in, in, in a field that, uh, that I loved. So, and then 
followed with that, and I moved to the U.S. and continued my education here. Well, if people want to find out more about you and any upcoming projects or how to get involved in anything you're doing, where should they go? Uh, probably Instagram, Pinar Topra Composer. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you so much. You too. How you doing? I'm Dante with Bionic Buzz, and I'm speaking with... Ronen Landa. Ronen, uh, what brings you here tonight, and how do you feel? Well, I feel wonderful. I'm here to support the kids getting a music education in school. Uh, I come, I've been coming for many years now, uh, I want to say 12 or 13 years, something like that, supporting uh, music education with ETMLA, and it's always a huge privilege and honor to be here. Do you play uh, any particular instrument uh, like a virtuoso? I'm not a virtuoso. I'm kind of a jack of all trades. I'm like a decent enough guitarist and a decent enough pianist. And I'm a composer. I write music for film, TV, concert hall, all those kinds of uh, projects. And uh, it's a great honor to kind of try and pass that love and passion on to the next generation. Is it difficult to come up with a score when you're watching a film and you're like, I got nothing. I don't know what I'm going to put, what kind of music I'm going to put to that. How is that situation? You know, uh, a good friend of mine, a wonderful composer uh, named Joel Dweck, i got to give him credit, um, said something brilliant once where he said, um, composing music isn't a thing you do, it's a place you go. And, you know, all you really need is the time and, and um, the space to go, go there, and it all comes. But once I'm out of there, I couldn't tell you how it happens. <laughs> I love it. Well, listen, tell people how important it is to get involved with education through Music LA and, you know, any other ideas that you have for helping the kids. Um, yeah, no, it is, uh, it is essential. You know, you know, music education and the arts are so fundamental to a well-rounded education, and kids need this. They need this outlet for expression, and uh, they need this outlet to learn better social skills. We know that it improves, you know, all kinds of language learning, math learning, scores go up across the board. And uh, look, it's great for its own reasons too. Learning an instrument is just uh, an essential skill. I agree. I play a couple myself. What do you play? A little guitar, a little piano. Very good. Yeah. Jack of all trades. <laughs> That's the way to do it. If people want to find out more about you and what you're up to, where can they go? Sure, they can go to my website, RenanLanda.com, or my Instagram, RenanLanda, all, all that happens. Love it. Thank you so much. Have a great night. All right, you too. Thanks so much. Sherry Chung. Sherry, what brings you here tonight? I'm a film and TV composer, and I'm, I'm here supporting ETMLA. I believe in uh, education and music, especially. It's where I got my start. Um, I just I believe that sometimes there's a devaluing of music in our in our in our world in our industry, and there really needs to be organizations like ETMLA pushing this, making sure that every kid in every school gets an opportunity to pursue that dream. What is it about music that you think is uh, can be so impactful on the lives of young people? I mean, I think music, like, it transcends language, right? You can be from any culture, any ethnicity, identify as anything, and there's still an element of music that's, that's really, really, it brings us all together, and it, we don't really need words for it, you know? And I think, I think that's really important, and it's, it's, it's a moving, it moves you, it speaks to you on a level that, as, as, I, as you can see, is hard to kind of describe, and I think that's really important, especially in a world that we're so divided, you know, this can bring it to, to us together. Is there any particular piece of music that you found yourself going back to in your life over and over again? Again. There is a score by Michael Kamen from Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, and the overture, the opening to that movie is so moving to me. It's just instrumental. You're seeing a lot of, you know, again, I'm a storyteller with music, so you're seeing a lot of exposition, but there's just something incredibly moving and, and draws you in. It's an immersive experience. So I don't really mean that so much as like, hey, this is an immersive experience as entertainment, but this is like something that really changed me, and I, I go back to that a lot to remind myself of like, oh, yeah, this is... We're not just storytelling, we're touching people's lives, you know, making a difference, I would hope, I think. <laughs> well, what message would you have for people who want to get more involved with ETM LA, and where can people follow you? Um, I can be found on Twitter and Instagram, at Sherry Chung, or at Sherry underscore Chung. And for ETM LA, I would say, I don't know, Google it, reach out to Victoria Lanier, she's amazing. Reach out to anybody who, uh, you know, that, that you can, who, who might be able to, uh, who's been associated with the organization. It's fantastic, and I think it's really, really important. And for those people people want to try you know, to support, there's always a need for it. So, yeah. Thank you. Have a great night. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Siddhartha Kosla. So Siddhartha, what brings you here tonight to the ETMLA 18th Annual Gala? Uh, I'm a composer for TV and film, and so I recognize the importance of, um, of, of the role that music plays in our lives. And, um, and having done it from a young age, 
I know how important it is to sort of teach young kids how to do it too. Um, and I wish I had learned even younger. Um, and so I think there's like a there's a uh, there's a uh, there's a need for teaching sort of our youth music, and especially the ones that need it the most. Um, and I've been supporting education and music for 20 years. I, I mean, on the East Coast, I was when I lived there. I I did a uh, like maybe 15 years ago. I did a battle of the bands uh, where I coached a, a school from uh, from New York, um, and and uh, we won this little battle of the bands thing in New York, and it was so much fun working with kids. So. Um, and my good friend Victoria runs it here, and so good to finally connect with her here. That's awesome. Do you think it's more challenging these days to teach kids music with all the distractions, with iPads, with social media, all that kind of stuff that they can do other than music? You just answered your own question, <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> without question. Um, and it's, it's, it's it, the, the more we sort of take a break from it to just focus on the kids' hands on an instrument um, and, and put away the other distractions, I think the better, yeah. Which instrument do you think is capturing kids' imaginations the most these days? Is it still guitar? Or is um, you know, every kid has a different. I know so many kids that have like I have kids, my own, and 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 uh, kids find the instruments that they feel comfortable playing. So I don't think there's like any sort of trend or anything specific. Um, I think piano is always a good way to start. Um, and uh, and I mean my my uh, my daughter started on piano, but she could have started on guitar too. So yeah. Is that what you compose on generally, piano? Uh, guitar, piano, voice, I sing, so, um, yeah, all of it, yeah. Nice. Well, listen, is there anything you've got coming up that you'd like to talk about or uh, any projects? No, just, you know, just good, like, projects coming up. Uh, um, I don't want to, I don't need to plug it, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, um, but thank you. Yeah, yeah, all right. Well, if people want to find out more about you, uh, where should they go? Uh, just, um, just Siddhartha Kosla. They can look me up uh, uh, on Google or whatever, yeah. What does music education mean, mean to me? Yeah. Well, first of all, all of the arts are given a, a, a short shrift when it comes to what's important. So all across the country, there are school systems that uh, are threatening to cut the budgets of all the arts. And, um, and we have to turn that, that thinking around so that they realize the arts aren't just a, 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 an added thing you might want to do for fun. It is an essential part of a child's growth and maturity and happiness throughout their life. What you're introducing to them at an early age, they will take with them for the rest of their lives. So now it's- Music educator, I can back that up 100%. Ah, and what? you talked about music programs being cut all over the place and music education through um, ETMLA, we come in there and we fill those gaps and we bring we bring music education to those schools who unfortunately don't have music programs, right. and we show them actors and directors and composers and what they can grow up to be. So you thank go. you so much. You're welcome. Mr. Cranston, the show's about inspiring others. We want to inspire you. Yeah. 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 And you know, Matt says, can you get a little time? Follow the okay. Well, it's not for someone who looks at it like a hobby. There's a difference between being able to be creative and doing this for a living. Um, and they're, they're not the same. So if you want to act, sing, dance, there are outlets for that person to be able to go and do those things for your own enjoyment. Uh, but you should only attempt to go into it as a career if you really don't feel you can do anything else. It's like, this is it, I'm all in, I'm joining the circus.